Man, somebody didn't call me. I done seen, and so I'm staying off, staying off my, my social devices. It's too much cooning and buffooning. Too much cooning and buffooning. And believe, and believe me, when I get my thoughts together, I'm going to figure out a way to articulate myself. Because this conversation ain't even for the whole world to hear. It's just for us. Believe me, they saying you cooning and buffooning. Oh, believe me. And they loving every minute of it. I'm telling y'all today, I ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. If it ain't about going up, but about being positive, about getting some money, loving God, I ain't too much coonery, buffoonery going on. The culture's getting killed. I'm not even saying nothing about it because I'm just so burnt out. I will be saying something about it. I'm, I'm, I'm in amazement on what's going on in the world. But hey, who am I? I am somebody, but even I get tired of this, man, woo, it's too much cooning and buffooning, y'all, too much, and we all guilty of it, because, but, but damn, man, I can't believe this is what hip-hop has become, man, I just can't, my, my mind is like blown, man, so y'all need to watch some documentaries on hip-hop, people don't even know what hip-hop is. Netflix has this great documentary on hip hop, the history of hip hop. I know, um, I think Steve Stout did one. Fat Five, Five, Five. Just go to go to YouTube, man. Go to YouTube, man. And I'm not one to cast no stone, but damn it, I know when to stop. So I just wish everybody luck and positive energy. I know this is going way over some people's heads. We gonna end it like this, Lord. Please, Lord, just, just, just bless us to understand the power that we have as cultural leaders out here to send out these positive vibes. And, and but he is fed up with 50 Cent's relentless criticism, and he's finally ready to face it head on. The air is thick with tension, and what happens next will be explosive. What kind of fuck shit is this? <laughs> See me, I've been doing this shit a long time. So I do what I want, when I want it, how I want it. Cause I, I be feeling like this too sometimes when I ride for too long. <laughs> Your toy shit. <laughs> we got motherfucking Ciroc. Damn, we got all this nigga, and y'all want Diddy to come to my room. He ain't even brought no Ciroc. I don't want that old ass nigga around me. He an old ass bitch. That shit is like an African champ. Ain't no more team. What the fuck is Puffy doing? I'm gonna have a drink to forget about this shit. <laughs> hey, my man's here. He came by. Shout out to Ethel Vodka. <laughs> Yo, that shit kind of watered down, but I love it. <laughs> Yo, check this shit out. So, yesterday, Chris Montana had an in store up in the Bronx. Ten people showed up. He said, fuck this, let me have a drink. Puffy trying to make me go against 50. He set me up. <laughs> That's how I feel about your bullshit. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yo, I just seen a clip of French Montana throwing bottles of effing in the dumps. You know, Puffy called him like, You said you fucking like this shit. You fucking bitch, you want your record out, don't you? You fucking dummy. You fucking playing. They fucking putting us out of business, you fucking ass. Diddy isn't holding back any longer. He's about to confront 50 Cent directly, and this face to face encounter is set to be intense. Years of criticism have led to this moment, and the sparks are about to fly. <laughs> What's going on, my brother? How you doing? Oh, man, man. man. Yo, it's Rube here? Happy yeah, 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 yeah. Happy birthday, yeah, yeah, birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday. This is fabulous. <laughs> the only nigga that got the name that I want. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you, my brother. Um, yeah. Let's take a shot for that, boy. <laughs> my mouth a little dry. Let me drink some more. Okay, see. But, um, 
Hey, you got something. It's your show today. No, the, the, the one thing I've been no, 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 you got questions. Bro, 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 bro. Get fat, man. Get fat. Get fat. Talk to the floor. Get fat. Hey, yo, Rastafari. Rastafari. Hey, yo. Don't do that. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. Let me pick it up. That's what I said. Let me pick it up from right there. This is like, I, go ahead. I gotta pick it up from right there. Look at this nigga. This is a very nigga. Go ahead. No, 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 bro. Bro, 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 bro. I'm telling the story. Bro, bro, we bro, 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 intoxicated. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Oh, bro, oh, bro, bro, bro you helping me build that beautiful, yeah, nice guy, Rastafari brand of yours, huh? Yeah. I, I see in, you, man. I'm walking in at that hallway right there. Bag at? Yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag Daddy, I like when you when you scrambling and scraping for shit. I like that. I'll be practicing. I got Yeah, there you go. Got your notes. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna go over with that one. Make a wish. It's your no, birthday no. every day. Every day is a birthday on Drink okay. Champs, goddammit. I'm in. Okay. I got notes now. I'm trying to get my life together. I'm trying to get my life. I want to taste the vegan Yo, Fendi, what's going on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, like see where I look, Did you look miss back me? on where I became. Did you miss me, though? For real, because we, I'm saying, I mean, it seems like a thing. I miss his birthday party, party. man. I man, but I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? Come on, come on. No, 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 no. This is me and you. Oh, me I need a shot. No, no, yeah, I got you. Okay. Shot, this one? Okay. Yeah, I just have to see. It's I'm all man. together, me I'm and man. you. Man. Eyes, 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 yeah. Oh, we are James. Oh, we are James. Make some guy out of me being here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, yo. So Ray J came with me. Let's go, man. Yeah, I don't want to discover. I'm going to do it so presently at the moment. And I need, um, I need to break out. Okay. And I don't want to be rude, you know? No, I just want to stop rude. by and give love. Yeah. No. Uh, Niggas need to stop cooning uh, right now. It's an emergency situation. <laughs> Niggas need to stop cooning, Facts. including myself. You know what I'm saying? Nothing off me. We all need to motherfucking get focused and get this money. Time for talking is over. Diddy is stepping up, challenging 50 Cent on everything he said. This isn't just a verbal exchange, it's a clash of two giants, and it's about to get real. Man, listen to me, bro. I was having a conversation with somebody, and they were saying the feds are so deep and involved in this that Diddy just might be called up on that Tupac once they go through the money trail. Once do they go through the money trail and find out why certain people was given certain positions that it's gonna, it may be a problem. Cause they gonna look at all that. Anything they can bring up, they gonna bring it up. Wow, so you think it's possible that they might pit Pac murder on Diddy? Yeah. That's why that tape of Cassie was re released. So anybody who was willing to try to help him, anybody was trying to say that he ain't capable of doing this and he ain't capable of doing that, they got it right there on videotape. But you being around at that time, right? Cause you was working at Bad Boy at that time when you know the whole pocket big thing was going on. You personally, do you think they can get Diddy on pocket murder? Well, they always said something about um, a million dollar check and nobody knew where the million dollar came from. Puff may have said it in a couple of rap songs and things like that but they would have to tra trace the check back to if that check Eric Von Zip had. And um, I'm not gonna say the person who they said they gave it to because I've said it before and I told people who contacted me that I would bring old boy name up on that because of situations that he's having in the federal government right now. So if they trace it back to Eric Von Zip and say, why were you on, and he's dead now, but th they have to explain why did he was able to 
get some publishing money or some kind of deal off the sale of Black Ground Records and they put him as Tank Manager or Tank something for Tank, this, that, and the third. Why did they do that? Yeah, I got you. And when you say check, right, just to get some clarity for the people that don't know what you're talking about, you talking about the million dollar check, right, that they put on Tupac to get him killed, the hit? Yeah. yeah. What I'm talking about is, is that if Puff has said on a couple of records that he'll pay a million dollars to, you know, he, but he was just talking to people randomly. So now everybody said that, and Keith D said that Puff told them that he'll give him a million dollars. Now, do we believe that? I don't know, I don't think so. I don't, because it was situations whereas that it could have got done by certain people that was around them, but it didn't happen. So, when Zip came up with the check for a million dollars, he said it was from Black Ground Records. And he said that who he got that if that money from. So now, if that's true, then the feds would have to go in and do a money trace on where did that check come from. And then they're going to say, why? Why was that check given to Eric Von Zip or Eric Zip Martin or Eric Martin? Why did that check was given to him and saying that he had something to do with Tank and he sold the company, which wasn't all his company anyway, for a million dollars? As the confrontation escalates, the pressure is mounting. Diddy's frustration is palpable, and 50 Cent's responses are only adding fuel to the fire. This standoff is about to reach a breaking point. Everybody knew that Puff took Tupac blueprint and changed Biggs and Bad Boy in image. I get around. I get around, talked about how fly you was, how many girls you mess with, how many cars you drive, how much money you got, what you willing to do. He took his image. Pac was the first one on the scene wearing Versace shirts. He went and got the same Versace shirt Pac had. Which, all right, some dudes would do that. You would never catch me wearing something, else, something that somebody else got. He was knocking down all the women that he thought Pac was knocking down. And what I mean is having sex with. Why would you want to have sex with women you know for sure a dude that was once cool with you was dealing with? That's that image. Because you got to realize, bro, Puff and Pac was cool at one time. We know this. Mo Prem said that they was going to sign the bad boy. So if he's going to sign the bad boy, it was because of Corey and them. I put that picture on the internet. I put the picture on my channel of Corey Jones. Uh, is Corey Jones? Corey Jacobs? I think Corey Jacobs and Pop right next to each other. Those was the real bad boys of bad boy. You understand? Those are the one who got the 16, nine 16 to life sentence that Pop was gonna go and be with them first. But then Mo Prem said, when it became just big and puff because Corey then went to jail, he changed his direction. But nobody know why Pac and Puff fell out like they did. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody know why. But Puff had an obsession with him for whatever reason it was, because he started wanting to act. He started wanting to rap. 
he had an obsession so bad <laughs> that at his Grammy Award winning speech, he used the same speech that Pac used. That shit is crazy. So when I'm say I'm obsessed with talk. Diddy is laying it all on the line, addressing every jab and insult 50 Cent has thrown his way. There's no holding back now. This is raw, unfiltered, and the stakes couldn't be higher. And telling y'all the truth, telling y'all the truth, who's obsessed with who? Podcast Sarah before Puff. Allegedly, he had Sally before Puff. And Kim had an obsession or liked Pac so much, she on a red carpet with Tupac shirt on. Who's obsessed with who? <laughs> So you believe Diddy, he only got with Sarah Chapman because Pac, he had her at one point. And it was a bet in the office. Sarah was messing with an NBA basketball player. Puff bet all the niggas didn't believe that he could get it within two weeks, $100. So she actually was a $100 bet that he got. And who was the NBA player? Uh, I think it was Gary Payton, allegedly. That's what he said. She, somebody said, she messed with Gary Payton? I bet you I get it. I bet you I have it within two weeks. Me and him and Sarah was, went to this party in Chicago that he was hosting with the streets entertainment. And we went to the store called Cranberry and like a cranberry and it's one of those stores like you get fragrance fragrance and you get candles colognes and stuff like that it's called cranberry and something and um, from that point on yeah but you gotta realize you gotta realize Misa and Kim was friend. He took Misa. He took Misa and Kim was friends. He started dealing with Kim over Misa. Kim and Sarah was friends. I mean, hand to hand pots and pans. They was close. They all used to Sarah. Kim and this other girl, I think she was from Atlanta. What's her name? Uh, it, it, it missed me right now. But they all used to hang together. So then he went from Kim to Sarah. And he liked to do the friend thing. Look like that. The atmosphere is electric as Diddy pushes back against 50 Cent's non-stop criticism. This isn't just another argument, it's a critical moment that could change everything between them. Gene Deal, happy to have you back on the platform, my man. How did I know you was gonna call me, Mighty? It didn't take a rocket science. I was figuring when I seen that this morning, that, uh, 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 and I don't know if you know what I'm talking about yet, but when I seen that, Diddy stuff hit the from CN. I said, I know Art gonna call me. Art of Dialogue gonna give me a call. Oh, you already know I was about to hit you, man. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, man. So with that being said, man, um, let's get right into it, man. What you think about the video that came out today? Uh, Diddy pitting his hands on Cass. Man, you know that was crazy, and I know people gonna think that you know, yo, this is all what Gene wanted to see. But now listen here, man. The devil got a purpose, God got a plan. Do you understand what I'm saying? The devil got his purpose, but God got a plan. You understand? And it's all in God's plan, man. 
you understand, to let people see because a lot of people wasn't believing that this stuff even existed, brother. A lot of people didn't even think that this was, that, you know, Cassie was telling lies, Gene been telling lies, Lil Rob been telling lies, everybody lying on Diddy. But Diddy told the truth. Diddy's the only one told the truth. He said, y'all just keep watching. The truth will soon come out. And you see what came out? My man, he punching that little girl in the head. Yo, you don't even kick a dog, man. You don't even kick a dog, bro. He kicking that little girl like she's a dog, man. That, yo, it was crazy, man. Any man that, that has a sister, any man that has a, 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 a friend that's a girl, any man that has a child, you understand, who saw that, if they wasn't a Paul, if they wasn't like, yo, I wanna, I wanna beat the, you know what I'm saying? We can't say that on television, man, or, 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 or on the internet or YouTube, but any man who saw that, wish they could put their hands on Diddy at that time, bro. That shit was appalling, bro. It was crazy, man. And when I saw it, you know, I could imagine what Kim went through. I could imagine what Misa went through. You understand? It was just crazy, man, for that dude to do that to that girl like that, man. I can't believe what I seen, man. I still can't believe what I seen in that video, man. Like the way he was kicking her, it was like he was kicking a field goal, man. Bruh, when I saw him run down the, first of all, when I saw the white towel, the white towel, I got flashbacks of him and Ja Rule running out the room. <laughs> of course, they had, uh, what's her name, Sarah and the other girl in there, but I had that flashback. And then when I seen him run down the hallway, I had flashbacks of when the same gang was chasing him. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? And then when he put his hands on it, no jokes aside, cause I know it's not no laughing matter, man. This sh just was appalling, brother. Words are sharp and the tension is razor thin. Diddy and 50 Cent are locked in a verbal sparring match that's both intense and revealing. Each sentence is a punch and neither is backing down. And I don't, I, I, I don't even know how they could even play that on, 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 on television, on YouTube like that and without even putting up some uh, sensitive, you know how they put the sensitive uh, subject matter up? That was crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah, man, I can't believe it, man. I mean, cause like I said, I mean, man, you've been doing interviews for years and you've been telling me stories about Diddy, but to actually see the visual. You know, so like, bro, I wouldn't have never allowed him to do no shit like that around me. That's why, he probably never did nothing like that. You understand, when I, I got the aftermath, when they told me to um, go over to St. Luke's Hospital, cause Puff was over there in the hospital, that was the aftermath. You understand? When Kim cut his wrist up with that cork screw, his right wrist, they got pictures on the internet with his wrist banded up. Kim did that, you understand? the aftermath of them being in the Swiss hotel and he roughing her up and like he playing fight with her and then she runs out the presidential suite and we got the big room in there at the Swiss hotel and then I'll be like, yo, you all right? And she like, yeah, I'm all right. It ain't nothing, you know what I'm saying? You good? She like, yeah, good. And then she go back in the room with, with, uh, with Puff Diddy, Brother Love, whatever he call his name is. So, you know, it's always the aftermath of something like that, bro. But in front of you, only people who commit crimes commit crimes around people who commit crimes. You know, Puff know who to do that stuff around. And that was crazy, man. Um, when I looked at that thing, to be honest, I, th I thought that the people who was watching it, because you know at those hotels, they have security personnel that watch that stuff. And if they didn't call the police, they should be in jail. I don't care what nobody say. You know, whoever watched that tape and didn't submit that to the authorities, they should be brought up on charges. 
why do you think the video is barely coming out right now? Because you got a lot of people, you know, that's wondering why it took so long. First of all, they know that Puff probably paid the security personnel like, cause he knew it was on camera. When he made it to the hallway to the, when she made it to the hallway, when she made it to, uh, to that phone, once that phone picked up, that's going straight to security. That's for emergency purposes only. So either emergency, the concierge or somebody that's handling emergency type situation when she picked up that phone. So now Puff probably has somebody pay them off. Nine times out of 10, he had somebody pay them off, bro. And then now Homeland Security is involved. I told you everybody talking about, yo, they ain't got nothing on him. His dumb ass son come out, make this whole tape, you understand, about what they ain't got or what they, man, listen to me. Homeland Security looked at Cassie information. They interviewed her. Yo, when was the time he hit you? In a, uh, he hit you before? Yeah, we was at the hotel. He blacked my eye. They went through a whole lawsuit. Oh, he blacked my eye. We at the hotel. It was on this day, about this time. They said, okay, we gonna contact and see if the foot. Diddy has reached his limit and the confrontation is on the verge of boiling over. The back and forth has been relentless, but now something's got to give. This is the breaking point. Now they gotta keep that stuff in the archive. They have to have that security for footage in the archive somewhere. So then what the Homeland Security say, yo, listen to me, on this day, this way, cause just for accidents, like just say like you, say you fell down the steps at the hotel. They got cameras in the hallway. They got cameras in the stairway. So they can see that. So now you didn't fall down the steps, but you say you did at a certain time. They go through that whole footage. So they have to keep that in some kind of archive. Now, she told them what date and by what time it happened. They contact the security personnel and the people who have that stuff in archive and say, yo, listen to me, we're gonna subpoena that. We want that information. And they sent it to them because they don't wanna lose their insurance. They don't wanna lose their insurance. The, the things that they insure the hotel, you know, say so they don't wanna lose that stuff. So listen, what they do, they hand it over to them. There's gonna be a lot of stuff handed over. Why do you think they, um, uh, got all the tax returns and everything on all 18 of the companies that he was doing business with. I told y'all, the Southern District of New York, they not into losing nothing. A 98.2 percentage and conviction rates. They not losing nothing. Go ahead, man, I'm sorry about that. What was your reaction when you first seen that video, man? I was sick as a stomach, man. I was sick as I was sick in the stomach, man, because you know when you have daughters, you just hope somebody don't send you to jail like that. Cause any real man know if somebody put their hands on their kids like that, you know, kicking them like a dog. <sighs> My first reaction was, man. It's probably a lot of other women that had that same problem with old boy. Remember Gina that got on that show, Tasha K show? And she said that, yo, he kicked me. He was punching me in my head and the side of my head. Do you imagine what she went through and she was pregnant, bro? Come on, man. I had flashbacks when they told me when he, he uh, beat Misa so bad that he was kicking her. She had to go hide up under a car. It's crazy, bro. As the confrontation unfolds, the balance of power is shifting. Diddy's challenging 50 Cent in ways no one expected, and the outcome of this clash could have lasting effects. 
Gene Deal. Happy to have you right back on the platform, my man. Man, I got a residency, bruh. <laughs> I'm officially <laughs> the number one residency position on Art of Dialogue, man. This is my new employment. Hey, the people love you, man. I gotta keep bringing you back, man. Yeah, I don't know about that, man, but I appreciate you. You know what I mean? I really appreciate you on today, man. You know what today is, right? Yeah, Biggie birthday. It'd have been the notorious Biggie Smalls 52nd birthday, bruh. Oh, man. It would have been his 52nd birthday. Could you imagine, man? The people he would have put on in Brooklyn. The people that he would have made great. Oh, go ahead, I'm with you, bro. Yeah, man, happy B-Day to Big, man. Happy B-Day to Big. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So with that being said, man, let's get right into it, my man. What you think about the apology video by Diddy? What apology video? He didn't apologize, bro. He did not apologize. You know, if he was going to apologize, he should apologize to Miss Wallace. That's for the, that should have been the first person that he should apologize. No, 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 no. He should apologize to Misa. He should apologize to Kim. He should apologize to Miss Wallace. He should apologize to Wolf's mother, Miss Jones. That was not an apology, bruh. That was somebody saying, I'm upset or I'm mad or it's bad or it's effed up that I got caught. That's what that was about, bro. That was, was with the, <laughs> that was, if that was an apology, that was the most, what they call it, ingenuous. <laughs> I guess that's the word. I'm messing it up, but whatever. That that was phony and baloney on a pickle sandwich. I can say that a whole lot better because it was not an apology, man. You know what I'm saying? For what he did and how he did it, I didn't see an apology. You know, he may have used the word, I apologize. For what? He never admitted that he, he say the video. So if you didn't see the video, you don't know what he's apologizing to. And I know it was shown to a lot of people, a lot of people cared not to look. The dust is settling, but the impact of Diddy's confrontation with 50 Cent will be felt for a long time. This isn't just another feud, it's a defining moment that will be talked about for years. The fallout is just beginning. It was about. You see, Common came on TMZ and he said, yo, listen to me. When I knew it was about, I wasn't going to even look at it. I don't want that kind of spirit. I don't want that kind of energy. So a lot of people who know what it's about or heard what it's about didn't even look at it. He said, yo, he should have been, I apologize for striking Cat Cassie in her head. I apologize for throwing her to the ground and dragging her and treating her the way that I did. He should have been apologizing like that to her and then apologize to the people. But it didn't happen, bro. It didn't happen. That was some lame bull crap. See, the same thing to make you laugh is the same thing to make you cry, bro. We know that growing up. You see that everything that this dude crushed people's lives, led them into the den of iniquity. Everything that he done is now crashing down on him. He got a whole lot of apologizing to do, bro. And it has to be way more sincere than that stuff that he just put on his Instagram. So you feel like the apology video wasn't sincere? It was phony and baloney on a pickle sandwich, man. <laughs> that was, it wasn't nothing sincere about that, bro. 
I heard that the behavior people did uh, 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 they looked at it and they did an analysis of it. And I believe they came out with the same thing and they professionals. But anybody could have seen that shit was baloney. Yeah, you, know, you got a lot of people that feel like, you know, it wasn't a good idea for, you know, Diddy to make that video. He only got, he only made it because he got caught. You got to realize a month before that, he put out this statement. It wasn't even a month, he put out the statement. Everybody gonna see, the truth is gonna come out. These ain't nothing but lies on me. Come on, man. I don't wanna seem like, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm bashing the dude, man, but you gotta do better than that, bro. You gotta do better than that, man. And that's for real. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot of people that feel like, you know, if he was really sincere, you know, he would have apologized once, you know, Cassie came out with the lawsuit, you know? Well, I can understand. You got to realize he getting his money now on marketing. So by him getting his money on marketing himself, if he could not apologize, if he could get away with it, he's going to do that because he knows that's gonna hurt him. You understand what I'm saying? He knows that's gonna hurt him. So I can understand that from a business point of it. There's no way he can apologize or say some stuff. Or then again, maybe if he did apologize, yo Cassie, I'm sorry, you correct. I treated you like this, that, and that stuff probably would never come, came out. Gave her a little 30 million. If he had gave her the 10 million, I don't know who's advising him. When she wanted the 10 million, if he had gave her 10 million and said, I'm sorry, I apologize, that stuff probably would have never came out. But he didn't do that. He waited until they put it out. And like I said before, now he got to pay the piper. 